succeed. Save your energy. We have an hour. I said if I was going to do TV, because I was never not going to be myself. Where are the people who are a little bit different? You're sitting next to one on the couch. So let's just say that. Be yourself, but not too much of yourself. Now, here's Jason. today. Overflow. Hi, everybody. Welcome. We have so many people. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome to the show. Thank you. We have so many people today. We literally have people uh, sitting in the next news studio. Mm -hmm. We have them like lined up. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Jason Show. I'm Jace. Let's start with this, shall we? It is by far the most talked about popcorn bucket ever made. <laughs> AMC Theaters released this special popcorn bucket for the release of D Dune 2 featuring the sandworm from the movie. <laughs> Both sides of the audience are laughing at this. Um, but it led, thank you, you'll understand later, but it led to a parody on SNL because some people thought it looked like <laughs> Go ahead and Google that. Uh, I don't, I don't want to lose our liquor license yet. Um, go ahead, make up your own joke with that. Anyway, now one of the big wigs at AMC says they never would have created the popcorn bucket if they knew that we were such perverts. Now, that's not his exact quote, but he said something very similar. And I say, you need to get a damn sense of humor. That's what you need to get. Roll the music, everybody. Roll the music. Pearl clutching. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Kendall Mark, everybody. Okay. Okay. Look at everybody. Thanks for being here, everybody. Good morning, friends. Good morning. That just irritates the the daylights out of me. Oh, they here's the deal. Here's yeah, and he didn't quite say if we weren't if we were perverts, but my fe here's the deal. Uh, uh, people at AMC, mm -hmm. uh, y'all were in trouble. Uh, after the pandemic, four people and a mini pony were coming to your theater, right. and 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 you were you were on the uh, line of bankruptcy, and then you were saved by several things. You were saved by Taylor Swift. That's right. You were yes, saved you by. You were saved by Beyonce. Yes. You were saved. You were saved by Barbie. Mm -hmm. You were saved by Oppenheimer. And that perverted popcorn bucket. Yeah. That's You're what welcome. you were saved by. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nobody, nobody talked about your theaters since Nicole Kidman did her pre-show thing. Right. Uh, uh, there's, publicity is publicity, unless mm -hmm. it's scandalous. And that's not scandalous. That's just funny. Stop your pearl clutching. Stop uh, falling on the fainting couch and be grateful for we're talking about you at all. Anyway. Yep. yep. Hey, how you doing? and a popcorn bucket and a bomb. That's saying. right. Exactly. How you doing? I feel great. Happy hump day. Happy, I know. It's Wednesday. We have a full audience. Yeah. We have full, uh, that's right. And yeah. They're from Brainerd. The whole left side of our audience, ladies and gentlemen, you're looking at America's future right there. Look at that. They're from Brainerd. They, uh, they study media, and one day, one of those people will take over this job. Yep. That's right, yeah. 
I mean, you can have it right now if you want. I mean, I don't care. You can have Audition it right now. Audition start in 30 minutes. Okay? We have good benefits. I'll tell you that. We have great benefits. Anyway, they good don't care about that. They don't know. They don't nope. care about that right now. <laughs> no. Anyway, hey, if you will indulge me for just a second, I want to look. I don't do a lot of birthday shout outs. We literally had a woman email me yesterday and said, could you say happy birthday to my little girl? I'm like, if I did that, this show would turn into romper room every day of like, hi, shout out. But I do want to give a shout out. Uh, yeah, the teenagers don't know what romper room is. But anyway, but yeah. Um, um, the right side of the audience knows it right, yeah. Anyway, but I do want to say happy birthday to, um, I moved to Minneapolis in 1997, and I didn't know a soul. I really didn't. I moved here on, on advice of a professor that I had. I didn't know anyone, and one of my very first friends, friend number three in this town, was a woman named Lynn, uh, but we called her nun uh, because she was a nun, but she escaped the convent in the middle of the night down a rope of sheets. Uh, yeah. She just ran away uh, from the church and, uh, or the convent. So I called her Nunners, Nun, Nun, but her real name is Lynn Blankenship. And I love saying her full name because she hates when I talk about her on TV. Um, so, but today's Nun's birthday. And I just want to say happy birthday. And as life goes by and you get new friends, and, and, and you know how it is, uh, th throughout your decades, friendships change. I will forever be grateful for none. I will always love her. And it leads me to tell one of my favorite stories of any human being ever. So uh, none woke up one night. And this was back when we were in our 20s and 30s. And we had this, uh, she had this apartment. And she wakes up in the middle of the night like we all do to, to tinkle. And she goes uh, to tinkle. To, okay. tinkle. to tinkle. And she goes in the bathroom to do her business. And she's half asleep. <laughs> and she's sitting there. And all of a sudden, she went to like move. And a baby bat shot up from the toilet. Oh. No. no. Yes. No. The baby bat was sleeping in the lip of the toilet and <laughs> flew up. <laughs> flew up. I, she told me this story at a hamburger place, and I laughed harder than I've ever laughed in my life because I'm getting the visual of her in the middle of the night with the little baby bat shooting up, and uh, yeah. So, Nun, on behalf of your birthday, thank you for giving me that story for the rest of my life. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Activate the hot dish. Roll it, Leo. Let's do this. Here we go. First up, it's a moment 14 years in the making. Tuesday night, Conan O'Brien made his return to The Tonight Show for the first time since NBC unfortunately booted him after seven months. It was his first time back at 30 Rock since hosting uh, his late night show at NBC. And right away, he noticed some changes at 30 Rock. Watch this. Yeah. When someone else is in your studio, it feels weird. So I walked in and I said, who's in my old studio? And they said, Kelly Clarkson. Yeah. And I, I love Kelly Clarkson. Yeah. Who doesn't love Kelly Clarkson? But still I felt like, it's not right! <laughs> <laughs> it should be a museum! Blasphemy! It should be a museum! They should have burned it to the ground! <laughs> And then Kelly came out to say hi and said, don't talk to me! <laughs> you make me sick! <laughs> you took like, a, wow. Yeah, I did. I feel do terrible, it. Kelly. I really yeah. do. Somebody else was in the studio. <laughs> I'm sure I'll feel that way when someone uh, is in this studio. It's like a cooking show yeah. happening, and Jason's like, get out! Get, get out! out! <laughs> My desk was right here. Anyway, Conan <laughs> was on the show to promote his uh, podcast, Empire, an upcoming Mac show that we're all excited about called Conan O'Brien Must Go. In the show, he travels the globe meeting fans that always say to him, hey, if you're in... Ireland, come see me. Well, Conan also told a hysterical story about meeting our beloved uh, prince. Uh, uh, not Prince William, like Prince, as in Prince Prince. <laughs> so here's the deal. Conan was hosting a benefit in Vegas and uh, for Tiger Woods, and there was a rumor that Prince would be performing with Stevie Wonder. Conan picks it up from here. And, and I just look over at him just as he looks at me, and he goes, Hi. <laughs> And I go, hi, hi, uh, hello. And I don't know what to call him because his name was changing. And I'm like, oh, Fred. Um, <laughs> no, definitely wasn't there. Wasn't yeah. Fred. I, I <laughs> it's really right. screwed up. No, but I, we, I said, this is exciting. Are you going to play with Stevie Wonder? And he went, no. 
And I said, oh, you're not going to play with Stevie Wonder? And he went, no, they, they tried to get me too, but I just don't, I don't feel it tonight. And I said, oh. And I said, so, huh, because that's what they're saying. And he went, no, it was a rumor, it's just a rumor. Wow. Just a rumor, we're not going to play with Stevie Wonder. And I went, oh, okay. So then I listened, and out uh, on the audience, Stevie Wonder starts to play the opening to uh, Superstition, oh, yeah. you know, on the piano. He starts to play it. And just then I see some motion, and out of the corner of my eye, a guy has put a guitar <laughs> over Prince. <laughs> And he starts playing the guitar lick because he's radioed in. And he looks at me and he says, bye. <laughs> and walks out. Bye. And there he goes. So good. Conan O'Brien Must Go starts streaming on Max uh, next week. It, 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 there's thousands of stories like that. Mm -hmm. I'll be very quick. My first day at this job mm -hmm. included, uh, I was a producer for a woman that knew Prince, and I got here, I was 26 years old. I walk in, wet behind, I was just like, hi. And uh, the photographer goes, are you the new kid? I go, yeah, and he goes, get in the car. And I went, okay. Get and I get in the car and I go, where are we going? He goes, Paisley Park. And I went, what? He goes, yeah, we're interviewing Prince today. I go, on my first day? <laughs> and I walk in, and there's Prince, and he goes like this, just like Conan. He goes, hi. I go, hi. And I didn't know what to do, because he's just, it was Prince right there. And yeah. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Do I bow? Exactly. <laughs> what, do I curtsy? Yeah. <laughs> Next up, Return of the Joker. We're getting our first look at the sequel. BB. I can't tell you what just happened. Anyway, we're getting our first look at the sequel to The Joker, this time featuring Lady Gaga as Harley Quinn. The first trailer for Joker, Follet, Follet du? Follet a du. Follet a du, thank you. Good job. Take a look. <laughs> what? meet in the asylum. They meet in the asylum and fall in love. You know, a typical love story. The movie is a musical, but no singing is featured in the trailer, so we don't know how they're going to incorporate it. It opens in October, and when that movie opens, our producer, BB will take the whole week off. Just <laughs> FYI. Literally the whole week. That's right. We have a lot to come. Stay right there. We'll be back after this. Back in a moment. casino. Go to eventbrite.com to sign up for tickets, whether it's your birthday or not. Well, welcome back. It's one of my favorite things that's happened so far in 2024. Remember that failed Wonka experience in Scotland? Yeah. It, nothing will, I don't know, that was my favorite thing. Anyway, well, former Charlie and the Chocolate Factory star, remember the remake around 2004? Freddie Highmore, he was a kid in that movie, was a guest on Kimmel last night or on Tuesday, and he teamed up with Jimmy's producers to <laughs> poke a little fun at the failed event. Let's look at this. Nineteen years ago, a boy inherited a factory. He's beautiful. And now, the gates are open once more. Hello children, my name is Charlie Bucket and welcome to my chocolate factory. <gasps> <Wow>. <gasps> Pretty sweet, huh? 
Unwrap the magic. And my one and only Oompa Loompa. You could fancy some yummy methamphetamine? <laughs> More for me. <laughs> Meet new friends. <laughs> oh. Oh, that exhibit will never not be funny to me. Anyway, more dish for you now. Some ugly uh, accusations against Rocky uh, Sylvester Stallone. And it calls for... Oh, no, she didn't. Well, in this case, it's he. But anyway, uh, it has to do with Stallone's show on Paramount Plus called Tulsa King. So Sly is accused of creating... And this term is everywhere now, a toxic environment on the show. After reports are, he called the background extras, quote, ugly. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> there are also allegations that Sly would call people on the set names and laugh at them, asking for, quote, prettier people to be in the background. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Jeff does that with me sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> Reports are it got so bad, one casting di uh, director, this is no joke, actually resigned from the show. But the director of the show is denying all this. He's uh, denying the allegations. Uh, season two is currently filming in Atlanta. <laughs> okay. I, this does not shock me. This that does he would say that? No. Oh. This does not surprise me. Okay. You, you, uh, when you, like, national talk shows or national shows, game shows, mm -hmm. there have been exposés where they will, they will stock the audience with, like, only, quote, pretty people. So the fact that they do this on a drama, yeah, it happens. So I'm not acting like it's not bad. Mm -hmm. I'm acting like, yeah, that's Hollywood. Surprise. That's, yeah. Whoa, but to say it in front of the people so that they can hear you and like what allegedly was said, there were a couple F-bombs dropped about how they were blah, 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 ugly people in front of them. I mean, that's awful. That's awful. That's awful. You're just there on the street. You just want to be on the show. You're just trying to make it like $5 side hustle. Like, yeah. leave them alone. And Rocky's like, you are really ugly. Like, you know, I mean. Okay, Mr. Stallone, you've got a lot of things that maybe didn't age as well either. Be nice to people. Yeah, I was going to say. Yeah, look in the mirror. I mean, I love you, Sly, but you look like a, a deflated TV dinner. Yeah. I mean, you know what I mean? Oh. I mean, you got punched in the face a couple times. I am times. just saying that to stick up for the extras. I'm just saying that, yeah. We are people, people. I'm serious. Yeah. We are of the people. I'm serious. Yes. Sly, you've had better days. You, the glass house, rock, you. Right. Next up. Some big movie news, Renee Zellweger is brushing up on her British accent again. So the Oscar winner is coming back to her role at Br as Bridget Jones for a fourth time. Renee, yeah, Renee will uh, star in Bridget Jones, Mad About the Boy. Hugh Grant is coming back. Emma Thompson's joining the cast. Leo, uh, Leo Woodall, from, uh, Woodall from White Lotus will be there. So this book follows 51-year-old Bridget when she's, sing when she's a single mom and a widow flirting with younger dudes. Now, it's going to be in theaters like in the U.K., but here it's going to stream on Peacock mm. on Valentine's Day. That's what gets me. I know, audience, I, why don't they release it? That, you know what that tells me is you don't have a lot of faith in it. No. Why, release it in theaters in America. It did, the, the, uh, yeah, why? <laughs> so, so, Kendall, tell them what you did. Uh, tell them what you did. <laughs> oh, I watched the movie. The I've original. I've never seen the original in segments. So my mom and I were together, and I was like, let's watch the movie. She's like, great, yeah, let's do it. I watched probably 20 to 30 minutes. I am no pearl clutcher. If you watch the show, you know that. Yeah, you're not sensitive, Sally. No, yeah. I was like, this movie did not age well. Oh. I was not interested in watching it. I was like, this is the dumbest thing I've ever seen, and I can't believe people like it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Executive producer Jeff's like, I'm sorry. I just was like, just the, the man. The focus on her weight. And yeah. The weight. And I'm like, she weighs 136 pounds and she's fat. Yeah. Stop. I can't. It was the 90s. I mean, I have no excuse. Smoking but yeah. Another cigarette. I no, it wasn't know, even like, the 90s. It was like the early 2000s. The first movie came back or came out, I believe. You had yeah. No excuses. There's then. no excuses. I know. <laughs> it was not the I haven't 90s. seen it in a while. I should go back and watch it. I, I mean, it. You, you kind of watch. My mom even said, I don't remember feeling this way about it when I watched it. But now that I'm watching it again, she's like, oh, mm -hmm, mm. yeah.
Well, I'm sure BuzzFeed will do an article on it. <laughs> Next on the dish, uh, they brought the beach. Uh, they brought the beach music of California to the masses. A new documentary is looking at the history and impact of the Beach Boys, featuring interviews with former members. And never. And this looks. Look, I wasn't a huge fan, but this trailer, I can't wait to watch this. Look at this. Brian put together textures that no one had ever put into popular songs before. He did it first. <laughs> what it's like when everybody understands the part they have to play. There's something about the way those individuals blended together. They're all part of it. The fact that it was a family, that's where the success came from. The documentary looks at the uh, conflicts in the band, the competition with the Beatles, and their lasting impact on the music biz. Uh, as it showed right there, the, the Beach Boys will stream on Disney Plus in May. A, it's a great trailer. B, I'm a little young, so I miss, I, I wasn't alive in, the, in, in their era. I forgot, looking back at just music history, that competition between them mm -hmm. and the Beatles on teen magazines, on the charts, Fast, that is what's fascinating to me. Well, and the idea that because they were competition, did that make them both be the level that they were? If yeah. If hadn't been, maybe not. We don't know, but that's interesting. And the music. I think they're underrated. I think they're underappreciated. Uh, yeah. you, you look at movies and you look at uh, uh, how well their songs are crafted. I, I, I think they deserve more credit than they get. Up next, when you're a parent, it can be hard to find privacy in your own home. Mm -hmm. But what... <laughs> But <laughs> one celebrity mom doesn't want any privacy, even when she's in the bathroom. In her new pot, in a new episode of her podcast, Tori Spelling says she <laughs> she she hasn't gone to the bathroom in private once in the 18 years that she was married to her ex, Dean McDermott. Since her split, she now. <laughs> Since her split, Tori relies on her seven-year-old son to keep her company in the bathroom <laughs> while she does her business. No. Tori says she functions better with people around her at all times. Hmm. Well, now we know why they got a divorce. I mean... Uh, <laughs> that would be it. I, I got to tell you. I broke up with someone once uh, because I'm not uh, joking. Do you want now, to tell this story on television? I don't know. Do you have you me? met me? I don't care. <laughs> I have no vanity. I, I've told worse stories about me on this show. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I broke up with someone once mm -hmm. because uh, I had a townhouse. Uh, they were visiting mm -hmm. and they were using the facilities and left the door open like they were going to an amusement park. And I was like, I, and I walked by and I went, no. I no. went, no, and we're broken up, and I never want to see you again. I, I just, no. I, I don't want to see that. I have a little song that goes something like this. Keep the mystery alive. And that's my song. And I... Shut the I don't want to... I've been... Uh, yeah. Uh-uh. You know... No. I'm not joking. I don't want anyone in there. I double lock my door. I don't want any. No. 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 I would Show prefer no one be home when it happens. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know how much farther we should get into. No, this. don't, because Jeff will have a heart attack. But I mean, you know. Right now. But I. But are, are you like me? Do I shut the door if I'm gonna go to the bathroom? Yes. Yes, ladies and gentlemen. Thank I you, shut Kendall. The door to go yeah. To the bathroom. I don't want little. <laughs> Wouldn't even like Mr. Big, my Frenchie in there. You know what I mean? I don't. Does the dog ever? Like, he does. He follows me. And, like, get out, and he just kind of stares at you. And yes. I'm like, get out. Don't watch. Tori, stop it. Anyway, we'll be right back. Back in a moment. Back in a moment. Stop the madness. He is way more than abracadabra. Coming up in just a little bit, mentalist Christoph Fox will join us in studio, and he is going to be pulling off some amazing illusions.
and then we're going to trick some teens by showing them some gadgets of the past to see if they know what the heck they are. That and more when The Jason Show continues. Welcome back, friends. Our guest today is going to have you thinking to yourself, how did he do that? He's a mentalist who blends magic and mind reading for audiences across the country. Look. Think of a number between 1 and 100. I'm going to try and say it at the same time as you. 99. No. <laughs> 1, 2, 3, 63. Tom Hanks. You said 63? Yeah. On my phone, in the notes app, there's a list at the top called celebrity. There's a hundred different names in here. We'll take us down to no, your no, numbers. No, 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 no. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. That's crazy. That's crazy. Christoph Fox has millions of views, millions of likes on the socials, and he's the youngest person to win the award for DC Magician of the Year audience. Give it up for Christoph Fox. Hey, Hi, buddy. Thank you so much. What's up, buddy? Hey, you guys are awesome. Hey, Jason. What's up? How thank you doing? You thank you. Uh, how did you come about this? Was, are you, did you uh, immerse yourself in, in books? Is this self-taught? How did you come to this? It's a great question. A long time ago, the only way you could learn magic was from people in books. But now, I mean, I was a kid, right? And I just loved magic. I just thought it was the coolest thing. I found myself curious. And like anyone my age, I thought YouTube might be the right place to start learning how to do anything. So I went to YouTube, started looking for card tricks, started showing my friends and family, and from there it just took off. It exploded. Oh, yeah. And now you mix, correct me if I'm wrong, you mix magic and you're a speaker as well. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah. you, oh, yeah. how, how do you do that? Well, <laughs> when you love presenting and you love people and you love connecting with people, it kind of doesn't matter what you're doing, whether you're speaking or doing magic or listening or having a conversation. It's just about connecting with people. Yeah. At the end of the day, that's what I think mentalism is. I was going to say, because I was going to ask, I, I, I kept referring to you as a mentalist. Mentalism, for people that don't know, that's really what it is, right? Yeah, I, I'd say so. It's magic of the mind, right? So I'm using a lot of magician techniques, but I just take an, an extra interest in how people think. So a lot of my magic is going to be based around thoughts, patterns of behavior, psychology, that kind of thing. So they're not really, uh, so, because I, I want to get the vernacular right, we, uh, are they illusions? Should I refer to it as a trick? What, what should I refer to it as? It's anything you want, Jason. Okay, good, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean, my name is on the floor, but yeah. I was going to say, yeah, so. Uh, oh, yeah. I'm just kidding, my friend. Okay, so should we do one, uh, let's, let's start. Well, I'll give you an example. So, yeah. I found performing for thousands of people that people tend to think of themselves fairly similarly. So if I were to come across any one of you and describe you as maybe somebody who is a critical thinker, right? An independent thinker. You don't just believe things at face value. You need some evidence before you're willing to fully believe something. Your close friends and family would describe you as somebody who's trustworthy in the moments where it matters most. You may have recently come across a new hobby or activity that you're surprisingly passionate about, but you still feel like there's a creative side of you that needs exploring. Most people would say, yeah, that kind of sounds like me, right? And it might sound specific, but it's because people see themselves similarly. I'm curious here today, who feels like that was basically not a good description of you? Not a good description. Anybody? There's, there's just a couple people. Jason, I'll let you be the guide here. Who do you want to ask for help right now? Oh, it's like uh, picking the lottery here. Yeah. Um, now, someone that raised their hand, Christoph? Yeah, yeah, someone who raised their hand. I'm seeing two people. Maybe one's a little more shy, and then there's, the, I think, someone in white towards the bottom. Up to you. Let's do the shy person. <laughs> okay. Always, always better television. Way in the back. What's yeah. your name, my friend? Oh, I'm coming. I'm coming. There, there goes Aaron. Stand up, my friend. Yep. Up, up. Here we go. Thank you. <laughs> What's your name? Kane. 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 Let's give it up for Kane. Come there on. There we go. <laughs> Thank you. Are we going to go elsewhere? We can go elsewhere. Well, let's go elsewhere. Let's go elsewhere. Oh, good, my friend. Yeah. Okay, next. Wait, where am I going? Down there. Down in row two. Let's try this again. No problem. Okay, here I come. There we go. Okay. We'll go over here. Okay. Name, please. Mm -hmm. Awesome. What's your name? Lucy Johnson. Lucy Johnson. What's going on, Lucy? So clearly you think a little bit differently than most people, right? Can I ask you right now to think of a playing card? Now go random, go crazy, change your mind a few times here. 
And I'm gonna do something, I've, see, I've got a deck of cards, but I, I kinda wanna make a prediction. I'll just do it right, yeah, I think it's right there. Okay. Lucy, out loud, what is the card that you just thought of? Ten of clubs. The Ten of Clubs. See, most people think of the Ace of Spades or Queen of Hearts, but you're different, Lucy. And people who are different in the exact way that you're different always think of the Ten of Clubs. So check this out. You'll see as I go through the deck that every card is facing the exact same way, except for one. Can you see? Where is it? Hang on. Where's the other deck? I don't no, know. I'm kidding, I I'm don't kidding, have I'm the other kidding. deck. <laughs> Hang on. If we go through every card, can you see how there's one card? Yeah, there it is, facing the other way around. Yeah. Lucy, how crazy would it be if that one card were the card that you just thought of? Really the, crazy. The <laughs> Ten of Clubs. What? Let's give it up for my friend Lucy. How? <laughs> okay. So guess, guess what, Lucy, for doing that, we're gonna give you a car. <laughs> I'm just kidding, yeah, yeah. Do we have time for more? <laughs> what? Do we have time for more? Let's do this. Let's take a break, and on the other side, more, more, more tricks with Kristoff. We'll awesome. be back. Thank back you so in a much. moment. That was great. Thank you very crap, much. My that was great. Thank you. Welcome back. Welcome back. We're now in the audience with mentalist Christoph Fox. Okay, I'm going to turn it over to you. We're in the audience, obviously, for a reason, right, my friend? I want to do something that is just going to require a little bit of imagination from everyone here, and you can follow along at home if you'd like. This is just a little bit of a test to see who I'm going to be able to work with today. If you're willing to participate, put your hands out in front of you about a foot, foot and a half apart. Great, with your palms facing each other. Thank you, thank you for... Great, great. Bring your hands together, lace those fingers together, bend your elbows at a 90 degree angle, and separate your index fingers just an inch, inch and a half apart. Good, focus on the space now between your fingers. Just lock your focus there. And in a moment, when I clap my hands together, I want you to imagine that the tips of your fingers are magnets, powerful magnets. Now, you can begin to imagine that, and as you do, you'll feel those magnets drawing towards each other, getting closer and closer. The closer they get, the stronger they go. The faster they move, the closer they get, until eventually, they touch. Now, each and every one of you are going to have a different experience here. Some of you are finding that right away. Some of you a little bit slower. In fact, over here in the green, I think, you can shake your hands out, by the way, but I think you were doing this perfectly. What's your name so everyone can hear it out loud? Elise. Elise. Do you mind if I check one thing? Of course. Can you just close your eyes for me? Mm -hmm. I want you to imagine that you can still see me somehow. I want you to imagine that you can see me writing a number on my hand. I want you to see that vividly with your eyes closed, you're visualizing that. Mm -hmm. And when you have a number in mind, can you just open your eyes and tell us what number you saw? 19. This is perfect, this is perfect. You're gonna be perfect. Do you have a phone on you that I could borrow real quick? Yes. Perfect, let's see that. Locked or unlocked? Uh, locked is fine, I guess. I mean. Uh, <laughs> you don't have anything locked on, I was just gonna say. Yeah. So Elise, you can actually, you can close your eyes now, and I want you to actually visualize typing in the numbers uh, in, of your passcode into your phone right there. Just focus on the first number for a moment. Mm -hmm. Why is that so hard? <laughs> it's like there's nothing there. Is the first number zero? <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> that... No way! <laughs> <laughs> Can you focus with your eyes closed? Just continue focusing on each number after that. Mm -hmm. I think it's something like... And if I'm right, then the last number would be something like that? No. Was it the other way around? Yes. You can open your eyes now. Check that out. Do you have Instagram on your phone? Yes. Everyone can do this if you're, if you're willing. You can pull out your phones, because I'm going to ask you to go to my Instagram. Do you mind if I do this? Sure. Okay. Dude's getting <laughs> follows too, man, right? We're in the middle of the trick. He's getting follows. I love it. So there's, there's a reason that we're doing this, because you just visualized something with your eyes closed a moment ago. You said you saw a number on my hand, right? Mm-hmm. I did. Good. <laughs> Jason, this is the next picture I'm about to post to my Instagram. It's in my photo reel. It's been there for a while now. Can you tell us what number you just see there that I took back screen, backstage? 19. On my hand? Show the camera. Show the camera. <laughs> Follow along at home. Thank you very much. <laughs> 
I am impressed. You better get. <laughs> you, you, you better get yourself to church real quick. Let's trade phones. Okay, so you can give her back. That, there we go. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Oh Thank you so my much goodness! I'll take the microphone. Thank you. Oh my goodness. Do we have time for one more? We do. We have a yeah. Can you do it in like in a minute? That'd be pretty fast, but we could try. Let's try it. You want to go by the desk? Is that possible? Uh, we can't do that. Are there the magazines there? There are magazines. Let's do that. I'll take a magazine. Okay. And uh, Jason, this won't be a problem, right? You can... Um, I you, can hold you stuff. Can, I mean, you can read, right? You hold yeah. that microphone. Just cool. don't talk in it, okay? There we go, yeah. I'll tell you what. <laughs> flip through, find an article that... Um, they would just be random. Like, if you flip through that random magazine, you'll find a whole bunch of pages that have many words, many paragraphs. We're going to do this as quick as possible, okay. so we might not have time to do it beautifully. Okay, I got one. Scan the text. Look for a word that would be interesting for me to try and guess. By interesting, I mean long. Like, eight, nine, ten letters. The longer, the better. I got it. You got a word like that? Yeah. You can close the magazine. When I'm reading minds, it helps to have a place to start. What's the first letter? H. I'll take this. Focus on the entire word. Imagine seeing it in front of you. Spell it in your mind like you're reading it out loud to yourself. Okay, we're so fast here. Is it a word? Was it something like heartbreakingly? <gasps> Get out of my studio. Okay, I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> no, we're here. Okay. <laughs> Who's is this? It was heartbreakingly. <laughs> Give it up for Christoph Fox! Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Buddy, that was great! Thank you, thank Follow you. Follow Christoph on social media and head to his website, ChristophFox.com. We'll be right back, back in a moment. Thank you very much. Oh, my goodness. That was great. Oh, my, that was great. Thank you. Thank you, buddy. Welcome back. We're staying in the audience to have a little fun. So... Listen to this. Let this uh, fix my tie. Good lord. Anyway, let's let me, let's let this sink in. Young people who are turning 21 this year were born in 03. Again, I was contributing to my 401k at that point. Well, and technology has changed a lot even since then. Well, today our audience, in our audience, we have some high schoolers. So we decided uh, that we want to test their knowledge of gadgets that that were used well before their time. Leo. It's game time. Roll the open. Here we go. Lydia, I'll have you stand over here. Playing with us today, give it up first for Lydia, everyone. Okay. Now, for you, Lydia, since you're number one, and I appreciate it, um, we're going to show you some pictures sometimes. We have props. We have sound bites. We're going to start with a prop for you, okay? What is this? A cassette tape. Yes! Do you do you own one of those? I have very older sisters, like 20, 32. Oh, per oh. so <laughs> very, well, very like, older, older than sisters, me, older than me, 32. <laughs> okay, I yes, I know. And next, VCR. Okay, we'll take it. VCR uh, tape. It goes a, v, a VHS VCR, tape. VHS That's right. Tape. There we go. Yeah. Thank you, Lydia. We appreciate it. Go ahead and give it. Uh, give it up for Tarrant, right? Yep. Tarrant, come on over here. Okay. More props for you. You ready, my friend? Yep. What specifically is this? That's an iPod. Yes! Okay. One of the first generation iPods. Okay. Oh, let's do this. What is this? A uh, vinyl case? No, I'm going to give you one more clue, okay? What is this? It's a record. Nope. Do you know what a laser disc is? Not a clue. <laughs> this was, look at this. It's, a, uh, it's bigger than both of our heads. This was a movie, my friend. This is, I know. This is what we had to contend with in the early 2000s. This was a precursor to DVDs. I, I use a whole bunch of old stuff. I have all... I, but not this? Not that. Okay, I get it. There we go. Give it up for Tara. Never thank you, buddy. Go ahead. Okay. Nova Lee? Yes. Hi, Nova Lee. How are you? Good. Okay. Oh, this is going to be a good one. Now, don't think I'm... This is not a weapon. <laughs> Nova Lee, what is that? Um... Uh, silverware? <laughs> I love you. I couldn't love you more. Um, try again. It goes um, with this. Um, a envelope cutter. I don't know. You know what? We'll give it to you. It's made to open an envelope. 
like that. Oh, yeah. Okay. I know you'll never use one no. of these in your life. Yeah. Okay. Let me no. give you. Let me see here. Oh. Okay, Novali, because I'm really loving you. What's that? Um. <laughs> Files? I don't know. <laughs> yes, Novali, it's a very small filing cabinet. Uh, no, what's... have you ever heard of a Rolodex? No. Okay. I have not. You know how in your iPhone you have contacts? Mm hmm. Uh. That's, how us, that's how us old people, we would be like, what, what does your last name start with? L. L. So if we, I was looking for you, I'd be like, Novali, your last name starts with L. I would have to literally go into this to find out your phone number. Be glad you were born when you were born. There we go. Give it up for Novali, everybody. Come on over. Jack, what's up, my friend? Go ahead and take that. Give it up for Jack, everybody. Okay. Okay, Jack, now we're going to move on to pictures. So look at any of these monitors. Leo, go ahead and put up this item from the, uh, the past. What is that, Jack? Something to open your garage. Something to open our garage. Um, it's like the same thing, isn't it's, it? You know, Jack, that's a really good guess. That is an ancient pager. That's right. So, you know how we get text messages now? If your um, bosses uh, wanted to get a hold of you, they would just tech, they would uh, beep, it was like a beeper, and they would just go call us, and it would just beep on your, your waist. Interesting. It was horrible, Jack. It, it was horrible. Sounds horrible. It was horrible. Okay, we're going to do one more with you, Jack. Oh, that's it? Give it up for Jack, everybody. Thank you. Get one, my friend. Annie? Yes. Annie? Give it up for Annie, everybody. Oh, Annie. Okay, Annie, uh, look at the television there. Leo's going to put up what? What is that? I have no idea. Okay. It's a computer. Let me give you a hint. It's dealing with the computer. Oh, is it where, you, like, you put the disc in the... <laughs> yes, Annie! Yes! That's a floppy disc. Thank you. Go ahead and give your mic, uh, give your mic to your friend there. This, this is Cleo, everybody. Give it up for Cleo. Sound bite? You last bite. Okay, now you get a, <laughs> you get a sound bite, so I need you to listen up and uh -oh. tell me what you're listening to. Leo, roll it. Okay, Leo, that's enough, that's enough. Okay, for the win, oh. what is that? Um, <laughs> it sounds like a, like someone calling someone, but with lots of other noises. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that is the sound of dial-up internet. We would hear that every time we had to connect to American Online. Oh. Right, audience, that's right. Thank you, my friend. Give it up for the young folks. We're going to take a break. Another young person, Kendall, will join us when we come back. Back after this. Welcome back to our show. Uh, time to meet our first JVIP of the week. Each week, you know this, we like to highlight fans of the show. Today, it's Crystal from uh, Finlayson, Minnesota. She loves that viewers feel like uh, they're part of our wacky family, and, well, you are. Crystal gets a Jason Show mug in her to win the monthly grand prize that includes being a VIP guest in her audience, a $150 gift card to Becker Furniture, and a $250 gift certificate to Renew Med Spa. We'll be back to wrap things up after this message. <laughs> See us. Go to eventbrite.com and search for the Jason Show. Oh, I was like, how does he do that? Christoph? Because we were, I mean, I know one time we had a magician on, mm -hmm. and you were like, I don't even want to meet him beforehand because I want to see I want to see if it's real. And it was. And this was the same thing. You were like, mm -mm. I, I didn't so talk to weird. him. I don't talk to him. I, rare, I'll sometimes agree to guests before they come on, but I don't usually. And uh, I swear to you, I purposely picked an article that I told Kendall, mm -hmm. non-visual, I, I didn't go to a main story because I thought right. maybe, and I tried to pick a word deep 
it was up there, but it was also deep in the story. Right. And he still got it. I don't know how that's he did it. So wild yeah. to me. And I've never used the word heartbreakingly. I mean, that's a, a law. Yeah, I thought, there we go. Hey, tomorrow I'm chatting live with my buddy Melissa Peterman from uh, Young Sheldon and Fargo and Person, Place, or Thing. Plus, former Bachelorette Michelle Young joins us live in studio. That's tomorrow, but right now it's going to do it for us. If you're watching and you're a kid that's being bullied, you go out there and be yourself because nobody can tell you you're doing it wrong. Have a good day, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow. Who knows how we did it? <laughs>